what do you think the the purpose of flow is? Like, why do we? Why does it exist for us? Is there a, is there an evolutionary reason? Yep. What is that? So this is from a paper I published in 2018 uh, on flow, um, which a lot of people are, and, and then we re, and then we made use of again in this recent paper. Um, so when you're in the flow state, first of all, you're training insight, you're training cognitive flexibility, you're training your ability to uh, to reframe. A lot of the re times you and I fail to solve our problems is because we're not framing it correctly. Like the guy who thought she, the woman was angry when she was actually afraid. Yeah. That's, that's by the way, that's our primary engine of self-deception. Is It's not, we can't actually lie to ourselves what we do. And I'm using this term in a technical sense, bullshit. We bullshit ourselves in mm. that we frame things and we make the wrong things salient and we misdirect ourselves and misorient ourselves. So being able to correct for that self-deception and that misorientation, first of all, that's very adaptive. Secondly, I'll need a minute for this because mm -hmm. there's, there's something else going on in flow. So I'm going to stop talking about flow just for a sec, and I'm going to talk about intuition because one of the things flow is doing, I would argue, is training your intuition. But by intuition, I don't mean some, I mean the following. This is Rob, Robin Hogarth's excellent work. So we have massive experimental evidence, massively replicated from the 60s, that human beings are capable of complex implicit pattern detection. They can detect very complex patterns without any deliberate focal awareness that they're doing so. Now that's very adaptive, by the way. Okay, but I have no doubt saying what I just said, mm -hmm. which is very rare. Okay, for, for a scientist, it's like, no, but the evidence for this is overwhelming, and you can explain so much with it. Here's the problem impl with implicit learning, right? Is it picks up on all kinds of complex patterns. It doesn't distinguish between real ones, causal ones, and merely correlational ones. And there's all kinds of correlational patterns. Right? For example, large weddings are correlated with long marriages. That doesn't mean you can make yourself have a longer marriage by having a larger wedding. <laughs> right, right, okay? right. It's because larger weddings are associated with a social network, financial support, and those things tend to predict a, a longer marriage, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you want your system to pick up on the real implicit patterns, not the illusory ones. Now, here's the problem. You can't sort of make yourself explicitly do that because then you'll destroy implicit learning. Like if you try to place implicit learning with explicit learning, your performance degrades massively. Okay. Because you're basically shutting off implicit learning, which is the very thing we're trying to help. So right. what you do, what you can do explicitly is you want to set up the context in which you're doing the implicit learning so that you will distinguish the real patterns from the illusory patterns. Well, what's that context? Well, here's how I can speak more like, this is what I know. This is what a scientific experiment does. An experiment is designed to set up the explicit context so I can distinguish causal patterns from correlational patterns. That's what an experiment is. Mm. Okay. So what Hogarth said is, design. try to design the experiment experience, the context in which you're doing your implicit learning so it's as much like an experiment as possible. What do you, what do you need? I need really clear information when I'm running. I can't have vague or ambiguous stuff in an experiment, okay? Because then you, what, what, what did the experiment show? Well, I don't know, right? So it's gotta be clear, right? There has to be a tight coupling between what I do and the results I get. So when I, when I manipulate the variable, the measure, there should be a, a tightly related change in the measurable yeah. variable, right? Mm -hmm. So tight couple, uh, clarity of signal, and error matters. It, the experiment should be able to show me that I'm wrong. Yes? Yes. Okay, yes. so he said, set up a situations in which you do that. Okay? Okay, so is that is that is that landing for you? Yep, yep. Okay, now, now totally independent. So it was John Verveke and my two co-authors that, right, made this connection. Totally independent. Look at Chick Sentmaha, the guy who's done all the work discovering and publishing on Flow, he just died recently. Um, what are conditions do you need in order to set up flow, you need clear information, tightly coupled feedback, and error matters. The exact same conditions that Hogarth said will turn implicit learning into good implicit learning. Because those are the situations in which your implicit learning is picking up on the real patterns, like an experiment, and not picking up on the merely illusory patterns. Oh, wow. Now guess what? Flow, then, 
is you're in a situation, and evolution has created a thing in your head that goes, you're in a situation in which you're probably picking up on complex, real patterns, and you're doing it with insight, so you're bringing tremendous problem-solving abilities to it. And here's the additional thing, right? You're getting insight about real patterns because that's what your intuition is tracking. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem with intuition is it only works on what it encounters. It can't look for new patterns. But insight gets you to look for new patterns. So the insight is correcting the intuition. The intuition is correcting the insight. Right. And you're getting great problem learning about real patterns in a way that is opening up your knowledge of the world. Do you think that would be adaptive? Yeah. And so evolution has marked this. So... Do that, do that more, do that more, do that more. Can we hijack that? We can hijack that, just like we can hijack anything else that's adaptive in you. It's adaptive in you because your ancestors evolved on the savanna. If they come across milk and sugar and fat, they should gorge on it as much as possible. Mm. The problem for you is that can be hijacked because you can go into a supermarket and there are shelves of ice cream. So you can hijack flow precisely because it is so adaptive, and it's so adaptive in a cognitive way. Wow. I've never heard anyone describe, describe it that way before. That's incredible. And also, if, you're, if you get really good at detecting these real patterns, you're simultaneously getting good at detecting these illusory patterns, right? Yes, yes. So and that, this is how people become like hyper-rational or start connecting dots that aren't real. So if you don't, properly educate intuition, that's the title of Hogarth's book, by the way, um, then you will pick up on all kinds of illusory patterns. Mm. You see, when we, when, we, when we like it, we call it intuition. When we don't like it, we call it prejudice or bias or racism or, right? It's the same machine. Right. It's the same machine. It, now, have you educated it so that, like, so a, a bet, that's why I wanted to ask you, how often do you get into the flow state and how real is it? Right. Yeah, I don't get into it enough. But I need to more. Mm -hmm. I, I recently, um, speaking to Tai Chi, interestingly enough, I just, I just started uh, practicing this thing called rope flow. Have oh, you ever heard of it? No. It's um it's a it's a type of workout where you have this big rope and you do different kind of movements where you walk and you swing a rope around. Oh. So your whole body, like the motion of your body and the weight of your step and the balance of your muscles all have to be in rhythm and it takes forever to figure it out. <laughs> and once you do it, you literally get into a flow. You have to. Yeah. So notice what you're doing. That's that's a great example, Danny complex, dynamically complex patterns that you're only implicitly tracking. And then you're in a situation in which you have to, right? You have to have insight because you're continually trying to meet these demands that are, yeah. Hidden. That's why you're getting into the flow state and you're tracking real causal patterns. Mm, yeah. And I noticed it's, it's actually changing the way I walk. It's changing my You're gait. getting the transfer we talked about yeah. earlier. It's bananas. <laughs> Yeah. It really is. Well, mo that tells you how much this machinery is going on outside sort of explicit talking to your self-cognition. Mm. It's going on in all these other aspects of cognition that we're talking about here and now. And that's where a lot of the power lifting is being done by your, your, your cognitive uh, adaptivity. Mm. <laughs>